The only thing hotter than nuclear fission itself might just be the stocks that are trading on potential AI demand for nuclear energy. Oklahoma was one of them. Sam Altman backed business, debuted earlier this year via SPAC. And in the last month, it's rallied more than 200%. We've got the CEO joining us. Jake DeWitt is here on the Market on Close on the Schwab Network. He's a founder and CEO at Oklo. Jake, thanks a lot for being on the show. Thanks for having me. We featured you on our Overlook stocks a few weeks back and uh, think suffice to say, less overlooked now. Uh, people really are thinking uh, this is the way to play AI right now. Is that what you're seeing? I think there's a lot of uh, sort of thought behind that and a lot of appreciation about the importance of energy being one of the biggest bottlenecks there is to play kind of AI and just the data center growth um, opportunity here, right? Uh, and you, you guys were talking about it a little earlier, but um, there's the land piece, obviously there's a the semiconductor piece, and then there's the energy piece. And I, I think our chairman, I said this before, um, there's, you know, energy is one of the hardest and most important ones to solve. And so it's a great opportunity, uh, I think, to see sort of the outlook for how nuclear can help with that, just especially given the attributes of what nuclear brings to the table, coupled with this, you know, all this new activity in the space, like what we're doing. What is the opportunity versus the reality right now? Technically, when I look at like a financial statement, you are pre revenue, not just pre-profit, pre-revenue. So where are you at in the process of building your facilities? Yeah, I think uh, it's one of the things we've been focused on is, is how do we sort of accelerate the typical stories around getting nuclear deployed. We have been at this for a long time. We are still pre-revenue, but we've kind of knocked out a couple key milestones for us and also taking an approach that deliberately builds off of very mature technology sets so that we don't need a long research and development product development timeline accordingly. Um, okay. you know, we're uniquely positioned. We got a site use permit from the Department of Energy to build our first plant out in Idaho, which is a big step. We've got fuel awarded to us uh, through a competitive process. And we have you know, eight plus years of regulatory traction behind us now uh, as we march through the continual permitting processes to lead up to turning on a first plant targeting kind of the late 2027 timeline for that to begin operations. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's a pretty great combination and we're uniquely positioned We're the only company that has all of those aspects in place. But that's okay. just the first plant. And that's exciting because that's first revenues, but it's really about the scale opportunities beyond that. And that's something we've been building deliberately for to maximize kind of how we can carry over other supply chains, okay. or, sorry, carry over from other supply chains, including partnerships like with Siemens. Uh, those are gonna be the big unlocks to really scale rapidly and oh. in huge ways. I wanna talk about those details. So 2027, the Idaho facility will be the first one active. Who do you have lined up? Who's gonna be buying that energy right now? How much clarity do you have on customer and price? Yeah, uh, well, this is actually a really interesting dynamic to be in. We've seen the value of the energy generated from nuclear plants go up pretty significantly in recent, well, I would say in the last year. You look at the announcements with AWS and Talon, you look at the announcements um, with Microsoft, uh, in Constellation. And the numbers that they're putting on a dollar per megawatt hour basis, uh, it's gone up significantly and it's showing kind of mm. the reflection in the market of the value of what a firm, reliable, clean you know, source of energy is, to, or sorry, I should say delivered energy is to them. Uh, and that's really important to data centers that basically want to be on 24 seven. Um, and so those numbers are fantastically supportive for where we need to be at to get the right asset returns and get favorable sort of, you know, margins accordingly on that. Okay. Um, in terms and is of the that, first project. And yeah, yeah, is that in theory that, okay, I totally see the argument, right? Your expected value of whatever you're going to build is going up based on the market right now that is forming. Uh, but then that comes back to, okay, uh, in 2027, right? Those prices could fluctuate by then. Uh, do you have commitments at this point to pay for energy? Yeah, we, uh, we are building out sort of the order book to move into that space. Right now, I can say it's not in our interest to rush to sign uh, any firm PPAs, given what the dynamics look like. Okay. But we have you know, some binding commitments, like a partnership with Equinix and some others that we've been building out. To get to your first question, uh, we haven't announced yet who the off takers are in that first plant, um, but that'll be coming out here as that kind of proceeds forward. Um, but I can say what we see is there's not a shortage. The day we listed, was the best business development day I could have possibly imagined. Mm. The amount of inbound and the amount of traction is huge here. And something I'll highlight that I think is really important, sure. you guys were talking about this earlier, there is a halo effect to use your words around AI and nuclear, and that's true and that's valuable. But look at the other macros underlying what's happening in nuclear, not just on the AI piece, but energy transition as a whole, right? This has been a theme that's been growing for a while about transitioning forward into a cleaner energy future and the things that nuclear brings to the table on that. Just a couple of years ago, the Department of Energy said we would need to triple our nuclear capacity in the U.S. to meet those goals alone. 
Hmm. Then you add in this other big piece, again, separate from AI, but just reindustrialization going on in the US as we bring manufacturing back into the country, something that we've seen several administrations and whoever wins this election is very supportive of doing. That needs energy. And right now we have this dynamic in the energy markets where you have long lead times to build new power generation. It's undersupplied and over demanded. So we have a lot of factors in hand that are very supportive from a multitude of demand, you know, perspectives sure. um, to help kind of keep, you know, uh, I would say a strong demand profile and honestly, a lot of upward lift on prices. Now, the yeah. good news about nuclear is we can bring a lot of price stability, even at some of these uh, higher prices to go forward um, and then see those prices, I think, at the end of the day, start to turn down because as you start to continue the rate of deployment of nuclear, you're just going to see the economic benefits of that. And that'll pull prices back down for everyday customers, which sure. is really, really, really important. That makes um, sense. But it helps us get out to market faster. Absolutely. Do not doubt anything you say about the demand wave and surge that's coming. I mean, it just it's pretty straightforward logic math, right? The question for investors in your stock is it moves the way it is right now. Hundreds of percents in a month is when that facility gets going in 27. What will the prices be then, obviously, and then who's buying it? And that kind of comes to the competitive and the IP angle, Jake, which is um, when you get that facility running, is it your reactors, your recycling tech? What is specific to you that gives you certainty you'll be able to get all that demand and someone wouldn't have beaten you to that punch in, uh, what, 18 months to two years? Yeah, I mean, I'll say I think we see ourselves pretty, you know, fairly significantly differentiated in a number of ways. I kind of look at this in three major kind of pillars, and that's what we built around the company or started building the company around, just, you know, at the beginning. One is around business model. We're the only company offering a direct power to sales model. Uh, what I mean by that is we're not trying to get somebody else to build the reactor, uh, to buy the reactor, I mean, and build it and then sell the power from them that way. We don't need a middleman. We just go straight in with power purchase agreements. And everything you've seen announced in nuclear recently has been about the offtake of power, which is what we deliver, right? And so that's one thing that's a big differentiator. Others will start to emulate that. That's great. But that's a great thing for new generation for us to be in that spot and have that head start. Another is size. We're starting at a really kind of accretive size point for allowing to build up modularly with a lot of these plays, both on the data center side as well as other industrial plays. So 15 and 50 megawatts serves a lot of opportunities. And it's not about one plant. We're building multiple plants on a site typically, but that allows us to grow organically with the demand set from these different customers, even if they grow to like gigawatt scale campuses and more. Um, and then the other part is, is, is on the technology side. That brings in the recycling piece, that brings in the flexibility and fuel. It gives us a great advantage, not just in terms of having something that's a mature technology that builds on stuff that's been done before, but it's different than what we do today. And that kind of gives you this nice green field from the supply chain and from the ability to actually scale into market in a little bit different way and leverage experiences from other industries more so. That has a ton of value because, you know, if you're trying to do the same things that have been done before, those those have a lot of friction behind them. So this opens up the door to do some things in more innovative ways. Uh, that's, you know, one testament to that is our partnership with Siemens, obviously one of the world's biggest industrial equipment providers, uh, and bringing in sort of their power conversion system to tie into our reactors. Mm. A great sort of, you know, touch point on, or example, an illustration of the value and, and sort of the execution of what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. But then on the recycling side, that's a really fun piece because not only does that help manage some, some concerns people have about waste and management, it opens the door for significant fuel savings and a significant amount of fuel abundance accordingly. Mm. Uh, and that can that can further drop our cost of production, increase our margins, and allow us to be even more competitive than, than anyone else in the competitive space. But just at the end of the day, I can talk about all these wonderful things. When we really look at the massive opportunity in front of us and how big it is, the numbers sure. are truly eye-popping. I don't think we've ever seen anything like this in the power markets. Hey, Jay, um, uh, quick question, last one real fast. Um, is right now the value provided of the business connections and the partnerships, as you mentioned with Siemens, or is it IP? Can you, how many patents do you guys have? What's protected? Oh yeah. I mean, there's a ton of, you know, developed IP that goes around the business and the technology, but a lot of it is really like those matter, but you know, what the biggest matters are and the biggest differentials are is sort of where we are in deployment and how far ahead we are in the game and with respect to having a site, having fuel, having the sort of the regulatory traction behind us, having the customer traction we have so far. Those things are the big things that I think matter more. But yeah, we do. We have an IP portfolio that supports these things and relevant partnerships and commercialized technology from partners, those kind of things. So it's, it's the whole picture. Okay. A great introduction. Thanks, Jake. Looking forward to being in touch. Thanks for being here.